All right, guys, welcome back. And as promised, I'm going to do a little season preview just to get those of you who aren't familiar with the Chiefs some information on the team. And basically, I'm just going to run you through my roster and schedule and kind of give you a preview of the new look of things as the mock-ups that you'll be seeing will be a bit different than the Madden 18 franchise. But one thing I want to mention real quick is that before I started, I actually changed the Chiefs scheme from a West Coast power run to the vertical zone run scheme. Normally, I wouldn't do something like this, but the default scheme given to the Chiefs fits more in line with who they were last year with Alex Smith, short passing game and more power run mixed in. But this year, even before the first two weeks of the season, you knew things were going to open up a bit and more of those vertical and spread concepts were going to be used. I'm still going to be using the Chiefs playbook, but I just thought I would mention that change. But with that, let's get right into the roster. At quarterback, we're obviously going to have Patrick Mahomes. He's the future and will be the starter. I don't imagine I'll be getting off to the same start that he did throwing for 10 touchdowns in the first two games, but we'll see what happens. Happens. As for the backup, it's going to be Chad Henney. So if Mahomes gets hurt, there's a pretty significant drop off there. And with Henney being 33, that will be something we'll be looking to improve and solidify moving forward, whether that be through the draft or free agency. At running back, we'll have last year's leading rusher in Kareem Hunt with a pair of capable backups in Spencer Ware and Damian Williams, who will get mixed in. Ware will be the backup power back, and Williams will actually be the third down back. So he's going to get mixed in there in some shotgun formations while Daryl Williams won't be seeing many carries but could factor in if injuries were to occur. At fullback, we have Sausage, also known as Anthony Sherman. He'll see some snaps but not likely to see too much playing time as we'll be spending a lot of time in either single back or shotgun. Moving to the wide receivers where we have the Cheetah Tyreek Hill at the top of the list with Sammy Watkins as the number two. I'm debating on whether or not to put Hill as my slot receiver or leave him outside but I think most likely he'll end up as my number one slot receiver and then Chris Conley will come in and go outside when there's three or more receivers. Rounding out the group is going to be Demarcus Robinson, DeAnthony Thomas who will be handling kick return duties and then Marcus Kemp as well. Moving to the tight ends where we have Travis Kelsey who is a huge weapon but after him the group gets pretty weak. Demetrius Harris is a 73 overall but is notorious for dropping passes and then Alex Ellis is your everyday third tight end and then down at the bottom I'm keeping Winchester on the roster as the long snapper you can actually put tight ends in there now so I might keep him just to keep things realistic uh, but I haven't really decided yet on that but for at least this season we're going to be keeping him on the roster moving to the offensive line we're going to start with the offensive tackles where we only have two on the 53 man roster Mitchell Swartz will be the right tackle while former number one overall pick Eric Fisher will be on the left side moving to the guards we have four on the roster starting with the doctor Laurent Duvernay Tardif starting at right guard and then at left guard we have Cam Cameron Irving starting, but if either of the tackles goes down, he's going to be the one that would kick out to take over there. And then Andrew Wiley would take his spot at left guard. And then lastly, we have six round pick Khalil McKenzie to round out the group. And then lastly, up front, we have the centers where we're currently carrying three. The starter will be Mitch Morse at a 74 overall. And then the backup is Jordan Devy. And we have a lot of versatility here as Devy can also kick out to guard. And if injuries take place, you're going to see a lot of shuffling around with the line uh, because we do only have those two tackles. But then lastly, we have Austin Ryder, who was claimed off waivers by the Chiefs from Cleveland at the end of this last preseason. Moving to the defensive side of the ball, we start up front with the defensive ends where we carry four. Chris Jones and Alan Bailey will be the starters on the right and left sides, respectively. Chris Jones will also be our rush defensive tackle, and then backing him up on the right side will be Justin Hamilton. And then on the left side, the backup will be veteran Jarvis Jenkins. Moving inside to defensive tackle, We'll have the restricted free agent signing from the Arizona Cardinals starting in Xavier Williams. But we also have Derek Nottie there, who's a third round rookie who could push him for some playing time. And I'm probably going to actually formation sub him in on certain formations as well. Continuing with the front seven, we move to the outside linebackers where we have Justin Houston manning the right outside linebacker spot with D Ford, who is in a contract year on the left side. The second round rookie from Old Miss, Breland Speaks, will back him up on the left side. And depending on the year Ford has could transition him into a starting role next season and then last year's second rounder Tano Passigno backs up Houston on the right side. Shifting inside, we have a pair of capable middle linebackers and free agent signing Anthony Hitchens and then Reggie Ragland, who was traded for last preseason. Hitchens will also be the sub linebacker, but behind those two, we start to get a little thin at middle linebacker with Terrence Smith, third round pick Dorian O'Daniel, and undrafted rookie free agent Ben Neiman. 
On the back end, starting with the corners, which is probably going to be the weakest part of our team, we have Kendall Fuller, who is a solid player, but behind him we have Steven Nelson and an aging Orlando Skandrick. Fuller will be on the outside with Steven Nelson and base personnel, but when more DBs come in, Fuller will slide inside and play the nickel, and then Nelson and Skandrick will be on the outside. Rookie sixth rounder Tremont Smith is the dime back as well as the backup kick returner, while Charvarius Ward looks to be a project moving forward. Moving to the safety we have Eric Berry leading the group at strong safety and the recently reacquired Ron Parker taking the free safety spot. Expect to see a lot of Eric Murray as well as he'll be the third safety coming in in certain formations while rookie Armani Watts could take over for Ron Parker at free safety in the future and then Jordan Lucas wraps up the group and looks to mainly factor in on special teams. And then lastly we have the specialists where we have Dustin Colquitt entering his 14th year as the Chiefs punter and still going strong but we may have to look into replacing him soon as he could retire at the end of the season and then we have the butt kicker Harrison Butker who was acquired last year from Carolina's practice squad and speaking of the practice squad I got as many of the guys that were on the Chiefs actual practice squad as I could but not all of them are in the game so I had to fill the gaps and that's going to start with cornerback Brendan Langley who should be on the Broncos practice squad but he was in the free agents so I scooped him up but at a 70 overall he very well could be a candidate to be stolen by another team the the last five you see there, though, are all on the Chiefs' actual practice squad, and they are defensive tackle Joey Ivey, strong safety Leon McQuay, quarterback Chase Litton, wide receiver Garrick Dieter, and cornerback Demontre Wade. And then the last four are going to be wide receiver Blake Mack and D-Liner, who coincidentally enough is a defensive lineman, and both of those guys were on the Chiefs in preseason. And then the last two guys are going to be running back LaVon Coleman out of Washington and left guard Bo Nunn, who was undrafted out of Appalachian State. And then lastly, we have a few guys who you won't be seeing this season because they'll be on injured reserve starting with safety Daniel Sorensen. I was a bit disappointed here because in real life, it's fully expected that he's going to be rejoining the team halfway through the season and he's going to be eligible to return. However, using pre-existing injuries results in him being out for 38 weeks. So there will be no Dirty Dan in 2018. But along with him, we also have left tackle Dylan Gordon and center Tajan Karoma a pair of offensive linemen who will be out the entire season. So that pretty much covers the entire roster. And now I'll show you guys the schedule for the upcoming season, uh, which is going to be exactly the same as real life, obviously, where the Chiefs open in their second home of Carson, California, to take on the Chargers before they travel to Pittsburgh, looking for the Chiefs' first win in Pittsburgh since this last Sunday. But in our case, it's actually going to be 1986. We then head back to Arrowhead for the home opener against Jimmy G and the 49ers before going right back back on the road to Mile High for a Monday night matchup with the Broncos. The two following games bring the AFC runner-ups in the Jags to Arrowhead before we go back on the road to face the defending AFC champion New England Patriots. We then wrap up the first half of the season with a pair of home games against the Bengals and Broncos before starting the second half of the season on the road against the Cleveland Browns. The Cardinals come to Arrowhead in Week 10 and then in Week 11 we travel to Mexico City which will just so happen to look a lot like the LA College see him for another Monday night game against Marcus Peters and the Rams. In week 13, we meet the Raiders for the first time of the year, traveling to Oakland before we come back home for three of the last four games of the year, starting with the Ravens in week 13, and then the Chargers on a Thursday night before traveling up to Seattle for a Sunday night game against the Seahawks, with the regular season wrapping up the following week at Arrowhead against those same division rival Raiders. But I think that's pretty much going to do it. If you guys watched the last franchise series, for Madden 18. This one will be handled very similar in that I'll kick things off with the highlights from that week's game and then following the game I'll keep you updated with any transactions, injuries, and scouting that takes place before getting into the news from around the league which is going to include scores, standings, players of the week, stat category, leaders, and more. But I'm excited to get things started and I hope you guys are too and I appreciate you guys being patient with me. As mentioned in the slider video, I'm uploading this and the week one game on the same day, probably about an hour up part or so so make sure to check that out as we begin our road to the Super Bowl in this Madden 19 franchise I hope you guys enjoyed this video and what will be coming with this series throughout the rest of Madden 19 and as always thanks for watching